Let's go back to 1887, when northeastern Oklahoma was Indian territory. The railroads were moving in, and so were a lot of outlaws. For many people, Ned Christie is the ultimate Indian outlaw. He was called an outlaw, but many Cherokees disagree. Well, a lot of people, when they think of Ned Christie, they think of him as an outlaw. A lot of the literature that you read, a lot of the exhibits that you see, portray Ned as an outlaw who killed a deputy U.S. Marshal. To the Cherokees, though, he is a patriot. In the hills of Jolly, there lived a man called Christie. He was well respected amongst the Cherokee people. Be primarily because he spoke and wanted Cherokee sovereignty. He did not want uh, encroachment. He did not want any type of uh, dealings with the white people coming inside and basically taking what we had. Ned had grown up in uh, Adair County. Uh, his dad had fought in the Civil War, uh, Watt, Watt Christie. And Watt Christie was a known blacksmith. And so Ned growing up uh, would teach her skills to her children. Uh, he learned how to be a blacksmith too. But what I understand is that the guns that he was given from the Civil War that his dad had fought with uh, were powder guns. Uh, Ned had converted them down to uh, where it was percussion, where he didn't have to use the powder, and it made him quicker and faster to reload. And he was a young man when he was doing this. I think Ned had this feeling toward the United States and toward people who were non-Cherokee, particularly white people, that they had no right in his nation, and especially if they were going to influence it in some way. It really all begins in 1887. The Cherokee Female Seminary had burned on Easter Sunday, and there had been a council meeting that had been called here in Tahlequah. And they're discussing funds and what to do with the rebuilding of the school. He's up around the north part of Tahlequah. Uh, he's going to ride back the next day. Uh, he wants to go and get something to drink before he goes home. So he ventured to a part of town that had a, a, a speakeasy type place. Goes to visit some people up north, and there's a, man, a woman up there who sells him some whiskey. He goes, drinks that, he ends up passing out. He woke up the next morning, ventured into town where he heard he was accused of killing a marshal by the name of Dan Maples. Initially there were about five people who had been accused of being in the vicinity where Dan Maples had been shot and killed. Ned was the only one that they were never able to apprehend, therefore he became the main uh, suspect. The people there tell him, Ned, they're going to be coming here looking for you. Uh, you need to take off and run. And he's, he was wanting to explain his uh, position that he wasn't there and that he was innocent of these charges. He doesn't leave, like leave the state and run. Uh, he basically goes back home. And he sends letters, even to hanging Judge Parker, uh, saying that uh, I did not commit this crime, please give me some time to prove my innocence. Marshals would come, bounty hunters, and he realized then that this was a fight that wasn't going to be anything simple for him or his family. He had a, a lot of people protecting him. There was a, a mountain that had been a fort, I guess that you would say, a lookout and they would warn Ned when there were marshals or other people in the vicinity of, of his home. I think the sense of community was extremely tight. That extended to everybody that lived here. And so they rallied around him to make sure that he was okay. It's a huge sort of fortified structure. It was designed so that he could look outside the window and see if anybody was coming so he could shoot and could keep himself protected. Family lived there and as many times as the marshals tried to go and get him, he kept himself free from them, five years. They knew where he was, five years, and they couldn't go and get him. There was a new marshal that came over at Fort Smith, and his name was Marshal Jacob Yose. And Yose thought this had gone on long enough, so he wanted Ned apprehended. And the reward was, was fairly large. I believe it was almost $1,000 at that point. They say it was about a posse of about 32 men that came. They'll also bring a cannon with them, uh, which shoots projectiles shaped like bullets. From what I understand, it's about 36 shots they sent this cannon shooting at this house and they couldn't bring it down. And so much so that the more powder they put in there, eventually they end up blowing up part of the cannon. But they also bring with them a lot of dynamite. That they use almost like, like a trailer to take the cannon, take the cannon off of it and the axle, hid behind it and pushed it towards the house because they had TNT, they had dynamite. And while Ned was trying to keep them off and shooting at them, they tossed the dynamite there and brought the structure down. Ned, knowing he's ran out of ammunition, goes out the front door of the cabin and he has his rifle up as if he's going to shoot, but it's empty of any bullets. And of course they shoot him. And then they all unloaded and they killed him. Yeah, he was an innocent Cherokee man. They put him on display, public display. Propped him up on the front porch of the, the courthouse. 
and let all of the crowd see him. So people could come up there and they would stand there, take their shots with him, they'd kill Ned Christie. This is the federal government saying this is what happens to you if you decide to go up against us. It's sad to see that as someone's legacy when in the Cherokee Nation, we revere him as this wonderful patriot, somebody who really stood up for our rights as a nation. And Ned was accused of everything, everything, every crime that showed up in those five years that he was running from the people. He was accused of everything, about 11, 12, 15 murders from what I understand. And uh, he didn't do any of them, not a single one. And so around 1918, a man, Humphreys, came forward. He was a, a Cherokee freedman. He states that uh, he saw the murder of Deputy U.S. Marshal Dan Maples, and that it had been Bub Trainer who had done, who had done the shooting. I really don't think Ned was uh, fully exonerated. Why do I say that? People even call, still today call him an outlaw. But there was no one there to see, so they just killed Ned Christie. If I had three words to describe Ned Christie, a patriotic Cherokee warrior. Our Geronimo, our sitting bull. I believe he set out to prove to his people that you don't have to sit down. You don't have to be in the background. We're still fighting for our sovereignty and our rights today. And so Ned Christie was a voice and a symbol for us then and now. He was fighting for his people. And that's us, the Cherokee people. Which I think is why his legacy, his story still lives on. Here at the Cherokee National Prison Museum, there is an outlaw exhibit which includes the Ned Christie story. For museum information, visit oco.tv.